Welcome to Tipping Point Show. I'm Jimmy Evans. You need to get ready today for a very special treat because today I have joining me L.A. Marzulli. He's an author, lecturer, and filmmaker. He's written 12 books, including the very popular Nephilim trilogy. L.A., thank you for joining me today. Great to be here, Jimmy. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> well, you're, you are fascinating. I mean, I've, I've been listening to you and watching you for many years, and you just go after topics that nobody else goes after, and you cover them. You cover them as a believer, but also someone through Bible prophecy. You look through the lens of Bible prophecy. Absolutely. At things. And so what you've done, you've made two films about Roswell. Uh, Roswell Revisited. This One is Exoneration, uh, and the other one is called The Debris Field. And so why did, why did you go back? Roswell's been covered so extensively by so many people. What, what, what caused you to uh, cover this? Well, the one thing, you know, you, you say it's been extensively covered, and I, I concur with that. It has been. Uh, you know, f f since I was a kid, I was l looking at yeah. Hangar 84 and the debris field and all this stuff. But it's never been covered like we covered it. And Exoneration, and that, that title came about really by accident. I was, inter I was interviewing Jesse Marcel Sr., the guy who was actually in the debris field, who collected right. the and went back to the... Uh, to the 509 bombing group, but we're getting way ahead of his story. And I'm interviewing Denise, his his granddaughter. And I was saying, you know, the whole purpose of this film is to sort of exonerate your grandfather and your father. And that's how the title of it came. And what we did is we flew up to Montana and we interviewed Linda Marcel, who is Jesse Marcel Jr.'s widow. First time she's ever been on camera. And what the, the, the whole angle of the film is to look at what the Marcells went through because he was a fall guy. In fact, I, I coined the phrase that Jesse Marcel Sr. is the Lee Harvey Oswald of ufology. Um, and for your audience, that the reason why this is important, and, and, it's, and it, it's, it's a very complex scenario. I don't know how much, you know, we've got time to get into some of it. Here's the backstory real quick. It's 1947. World War II has just ended. And it ended with in the Japanese theater by the Americans dropping two atomic bombs, one Hiroshima, right. the other on Nagasaki. So now we are in the nuclear era. Right after that, shortly after that, Israel becomes a nation. Big check. Shortly after that, we get this flap of UFOs. And Kenneth Arnold up in Mount Rainier in Washington State sees these shapes, and he calls them flying saucers. Two weeks later, we have the events in Roswell. And we know from a eyewitnesses, the Dumont's, Mr. and Mrs. Dumont, were out there looking, and they saw a craft come in at 400 to 500 miles an hour, and it looked like this. It looked like two saucers put together, exactly like this. This thing came streaking in 400 to 500 miles per hour. That's not a weather balloon, first of all. So yeah. Mac Brazel is the rancher, and he's out, and it's, I've been to the debris field. The debris field is in the middle of nowhere. I mean, middle of nowhere. It's free-range cattle stuff. And so what, what makes this absolutely incredible is that when uh, Brazel goes out to look, look at the cows and all that kind of stuff, and he sees this debris field, and he picks up some of the wreckage, and he brings it back to Roswell. Hey, something crashed here. Is it one of your guys? He brings it to the sheriff. The sheriff goes, you need to go to the 509th Bombing Group. The 509th Bombing Group was the only atomic bombing group, nuclear-capable group on the planet, and it's stationed where? Roswell, New Mexico. Wow. So now you've got a crash, right? I mean, it, it gets really, really deep here. So Brazil brings the wreckage back, shows it to Jesse Marcel Sr., who's the intelligence officer of the 509th Bombing Group. This guy is smart. He's really smart. He's the intelligence officer. It's not Elmer Fudd. This guy is trained in everything that's out there, what the okay. Russians have, what the Chicoms have, what the Nazis have. It's not a Nazi experimental craft, in my opinion. It is, in fact, a craft from another world, but I digress. So the reason why it's so important that originally, you can see I've got all my props here. Um, this, is, this is what the Roswell Daily newspaper runs. And, it, and I'm sorry, I got the wrong one. It's this one. RAF captures flying saucer. That's the truth. And in wow. that, in that, you've got Mr. and Mrs. Dan Wilmot coming on the record. They're the ones that talked about the, the saucer coming in at 400 miles per hour, glowing and everything else. Well, a day later, this is what, this is what we're, we're, we're greeted with. General Ramey says excitement not justified. And that's when the whole weather balloon story 
was concocted. Right. And and Tim Tim Alberino comes on the record in the film Exoneration and basically states that they had it right the first time. They told the truth. What crashed there was a crash a, a crashed disc from another world. And then the deliberate obfuscation, the lying, essentially, in my opinion, began and the cover story that it was just a weather balloon. Well, you know, I've seen, do you believe the accounts? Because I've seen, I can't remember where I saw it, probably on television, where the first people on the scene actually saw the bodies of the aliens. Do you believe that? Yeah, I do. There, there are, there in the film, oh, I mean, there's so much, it's just like my head is spinning. In, <laughs> in the film, we, we show and read from an affidavit from Walter G. Hout. Hout was stationed at Roswell. He was involved in all of this, okay? Very much involved in this whole um, skullduggery, if I can use that word. He states on the record that he was taken to Ang Hangar 84. We were, our film company got into Hangar 84. We filmed in Hangar 84. How it states on the record in what amounts to a deathbed confession. It's a sealed affidavit not to be opened until the time of his death. He states on the record that he was taken to Hangar 84 and he was shown the bodies. The bodies were under tarps. Wow. And the wreckage was in Hangar 84. We also, it's not in the film, it's on my YouTube channel. A man came up to me whose grandmother worked most of her life in Roswell with the 509th Bombing Group. And she stated a month before she died, isn't it interesting? It's always a deathbed confession. She stated on the record that that's where Hangar 84, that's where the bodies were kept. We also have in the film Colonel Hill, another deathbed confession, who stated on the record that Roswell was not a weather balloon. He was flown, he was OSS, forerunner of the CIA. He was flown from Dallas, Fort Worth to Roswell, New Mexico within 48 hours. One of them, one of the bodies, one of the entities was still alive. He tried to communicate with it. What we have, what we have, Jimmy, is a skip site. So here's, here's the ground. This, this craft comes in like this. It skips and part of it disintegrates. That's the debris field. That's the first debris field. That's where Jesse Marcel Sr. and Mac Brazel, that's where they were. But then it skips like this and it lands again and that's where it explodes and that's where the bodies were found. Marcel Sr., Major Marcel Sr. never saw the bodies. He saw the wreckage and he handled the wreckage. Right. On another site, which is a skip site, we actually show this in the film. It was, it was a film that was smuggled out of White Sands. We don't know by whom, we don't, but it, it appears to be real. We've looked at it numerous times. And, it's, and it shows the craft coming in like this. It skips once. The second time when it hits, it explodes. And shards fly off this thing like bullets out of a gun. And we'll get into that a little bit later. The bodies were recovered. We know that from multiple witnesses. Multiple witnesses. Three of them I just, I just stated. How many times do we have to hear this? You know, then you've got Glenn Dennis, who was the mortuary, the, the funeral director in Roswell, New Mexico. We drove by that. We should, don't show it in the film, but we visited it. Um, the bottom line is, you know, he was asked to bring in small coffins, the coffins the size of a child. The bodies that were recovered were from a 10 year old. They were they were the grays. They were small. Um, they were the size of a 10 year old child. And people ask, well, why would, what are the greys? Are these extraterrestrials? No, they're not extraterrestrials. They're interdimensional entities from the second heaven. This yeah. is the, the handprints of the fallen dragon, the fallen one, Satan. Yeah. And people had this whole thing, well, why do angels need this? Go to Second Kings and read Elisha and, and his servant Gehazi. They're surrounded by the Syrian army, and, and Gehazi's totally freaked out. We're all going to die. I get that. So Elisha says, open his eyes, Lord. Gehazi goes out of the tent. What does he say? I saw the chariots of fire above the Syrian army. What is a chariot of fire? You tell me. And you can tap dance around that till the cows come home. Because Gehazi is seeing something that he's never seen before. And he has right. nothing in his wheelhouse, nothing in his, his paradigm uh, to even communicate what he's looking at. This is right. thousands of years ago. So the, the mode of transportation is a chariot. And the mode of lighting at night is a, is a fire. A chariot of fire. Well, what does that sound like? You know, and I get it. Oh, well, you're just kind of reading it. <laughs> this is exactly what he saw. 
And so the good guys and the bad guys have them. And then let me just say this. People have, have trouble. There's a book I'm writing. Um, I've got six chapters into it. I've got to get the rungs on the ladder of disclosure book first. The Lord redirected my steps before I finish this one. But this book is called Technology, Supernatural Technology in the Bible. Most of us know the story. Adam and Eve get the boot. They get kicked out of Eden. And the Lord showed me something over the weekend, which I think you'll find really interesting. Jimmy, they were terrified. They were absolutely terrified. That's why they were hiding. You hide when you're terrified. They were yeah. terrified. They realized maybe they couldn't articulate it, but they realized what had just happened, what on some level, what had been done. I get goosebumps just even thinking about it. So they get the boot, they kick out of the garden. The Lord sends two cherubim to guard the east gate. Well, why not the north, the south, and the west gate? We're not told. But then we get something really interesting. He places a sword, a flaming sword, which turns every which way. Are you ready for this? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a lightsaber. People can laugh at that and joke about it. What is a flaming sword? It's a lightsaber. Yeah. And that's technology that we don't have. That's technology, supernatural technology. One more. The New Jerusalem descends from heaven. The thing is 1,500 miles wide. It, it's the same length, and it's 1,500 miles high. Who does the engineering for that? I mean, 1,500 miles? Who, who does the energy calculus? How does this work? And it descends. It just doesn't go boom on the ground. It descends slowly. We all get to watch it come down and, and go, yay! How does that work? <laughs> right? We've got, we've got a truncated view of the supernatural. There is technology there. Right. It, so when the, when the Roswell incident happened, and I really do appreciate that insight, it's, it's what I like about the way you present information is because this is this is reality. Roswell Roswell happened, and uh, and they're very credible, uh, you know, uh, testimonies like you said of the fact it did crash. There were beings there that came from it. I totally agree with you. These are extra dimensional or interdimensional, right. you know, interdimensional so, beings. So um, General Ramey redacted the original account. Why? He, he's getting orders from somewhere. In my opinion, this is conjecture. In my opinion, the, the higher ups, the guys in the Pentagon, remembered War of the Worlds with Orson Welles. And they basically said, we're not going there. Can't do this. It's not public's not ready for it. And put the kibosh on it, which is what they did. Since then, there's been a rash, so many articles and movies and films and shows that nobody cares anymore. When, when David Grush stands up in Congress or, or testifies in Congress that we've retrieved, you know, bodies that are non-human, biologics that are non-human biologics that nobody cares. I mean, that's like the, one of the most profound statements of the 21st century. It's just mind boggling. And, but and more people believe well, in UFOs than believe in God. Well, and that's and this is what's alarming, that most people, most of our kids you know, the 20 year old something, Generation Zers, and even Xers for that amount, um, believe in the ancient astronaut theory, where we were seated here by extraterrestrials. And that is being promulgated every Friday night on ancient aliens. So the kids yeah. watch it. They watch Katy Perry, you know, Alien, the Alien film. They listen to Taylor Swift's song, which is about alien abduction. I mean, they are they are being indoctrinated, Jimmy. Yes, they are. They're being indoctrinated, and the church needs to stand up and push back and not be afraid of what's going on. And and that's what I love about what you're doing is because it does give an a, an answer, a specific plausible answer to these kinds of things. Because you know UFOs are just real, and they denied them. Now, in in your documentary, you talked to Linda Marcel. Dr. Jesse Marcel Jr.'s widow, and she was saying they were harassed. Her family has been harassed because they they stood by their story. Is that why they were harassed? Well, exactly. I mean, again, Jesse Marcel Sr. Was, was the fall guy. There's a picture that we show in the film where Marcel has trotted out all the presses there, and they've switched the, the wreckage from the UFO for a weather balloon. And Marcel right. is looking up at Gemma Ramey going like, you've got to be kidding me. You know, this isn't what I saw. He's the patsy. He's the fall guy. And so he was the Marcel name was disparaged for, for decades, which is why we call it exoneration. Marcel told the truth. Marcel knows exactly. And, and we show this clip in the film where Marcel now is an old man. 
He's well into his 70s at this point, maybe even early 80s. I don't know. I should I should look that up. But he's an old man, and he's back in the debris field. This isn't, you know, the young man in Roswell, 1947. Right. This is decades later, you know. So he's he's up there in age, and he looks right at the camera, and he goes, and he goes, because he's in the debris field, and he's it's very emotional for him. And he goes, you know, there were there were pieces of the wreckage. There was this metal, which was the foil was as thin as a aluminum in the foil in a pack of cigarettes, which everyone knows back then because everybody smoked. Yeah. <laughs> Not so much anymore. Hello. And and you couldn't bend it. You took a sledgehammer to it. You couldn't dent it. I mean, there's there's so many eyewitnesses that have come forward. I mean, this whole thing is a cover up by by the government. But Marcel looks right at the camera in the debris field and he says, he says, Gemma Ramey and I, but we both knew differently. And he's talking wow. about the way he was trotted out and made to, you know, this is a weather balloon. And he says, they wanted me to speak, but this isn't what I did. You know, I, I wasn't trained in this. You know, I, I didn't do this. So he didn't speak. And and Gemma Ramey just said, nothing to see here. It's just a weather balloon. Let's all forget about it. And that's that's how they couched it. And then anybody who was an eyewitness was threatened. We know yeah. that from other people who, like Dr. Stanton Friedman and other people who have written on the subject, um, people were threatened, absolutely threatened, never to say a word about this again. So it was buried, really, until Dr. Stanton Friedman opened up the can of worms. And, you know, people have studied it, but no one's ever studied it like we have. The idea of, well, what did the Marcel family go through? And that's right. what we really, you know, that's the umbrella. Mark Hitchcock and I have a new book. We're right, we've written a series called What's Next. Our first book was on the Iran uh, or the Israel-Gaza war. Many of you have gotten that. This one now is called Artificial Intelligence and the Antichrist, AI and the Antichrist. What's next? We're talking about what's, what's going on in the world currently and what's about to happen. Well, what's going on in the world right now is artificial intelligence and the rise of the Antichrist spirit. And we believe the Antichrist is going to come very soon. He'll step on the world scene very soon. The, the rapture, we have another book coming out right after this on the rapture of the church. These are the things that we believe are coming next. And so this releases this coming Friday on Amazon. Be sure and get that because this, this will bless you and help you and tell you what's going on right now in the world. 